Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter, and this is Cookies and Canvas for Kids. All right, so today we're gonna to be painting birds on a blossoming branch, and I'm gonna be eating my branch-shaped pretzel sugar cookies. So let's paint our canvas and eat our cookies. All right, so for the materials today, we're gonna to be using a stretched and primed 12 by 24 canvas. Um, you can get this at any of your local craft stores or you can get it online and of course you can switch up the size if you want to. I wanted mine to be a little bit on the long narrow side but you can of course use any size that you want. Um, I'm going to be using acrylic paint and the colors I'm using today are titanium white, chrome yellow, fluorescent pink, cobalt blue, Mars black, this is burnt sienna which I may refer to as rust or brown. This is green oxide, and again, you can switch up the colors, but that's what I'm going to be using. I'll be using three brushes. The brushes that I'm going to be using are a number 14 filbert brush, a number 12 round brush, and a number zero round brush, and I will refer to them as small, medium, and large, and again, you can switch up those sizes, but that's what I'm using. You're going to need a cup of water for washing your brushes. You'll need a paper towel for drying your brushes. And in the description below the um, video, I will have a downloadable image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as a visual reference as you go along through the painting process. I'm gonna put step-by-step -step instructions as well so you can um, read or print those out. And I'm also gonna put down below my delicious recipe for my pretzel bark uh, pretzel branch, pretzel bark, whatever you want to call them, sugar cookies. Um, so that's all you're going to need. All right, so what we're going to do for the first step is we are painting our sky. I'm going to be using the large filbert brush and the colors, oops, I have a cookie crumb in my, in my palette, whoops. Um, it'll just add texture to my painting. Um, the colors I'm going to be using are white, yellow, pink, and blue and I'm gonna be not washing my brush throughout this process, and I will always be using white on my brush. So no matter what color I go into, I'm also gonna use white. I'm gonna start with just white on my brush, and I'm gonna be painting in kind of a curved um, painting stroke. So I'm gonna start up here, and I'm gonna come down with my white in this curved painting stroke, the next time I go to pick up paint, I'm picking up white with just a tiny touch of yellow on my brush because yellow is very, very bright. So, and I want mine to be a little bit on the more subtle side, but if you want yours really, really bright, you can certainly do that. And I'm gonna back this yellow up into the white just a little bit so that way it looks like it's almost blending with that um, bright, bright sun. And then as I come down, I'm still going to use this um, curved motion. I just picked up some more white, so this gets a little bit whiter or lighter as it comes down just a little bit. And then I'm going to do this for a minute, and then I'm going to add pink and white to my brush. So white, 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 and of course you can continue to blend this until, um, until that paint dries on you. So if you want to get it to blend in a little bit more. Now I'm going white and just a little bit of pink on my brush. I have both colors on my brush. And it might look a little bit of like a peachy color if you still have a lot of yellow on your brush, but that's okay. That's gonna make it look really super cool. And I'm just doing pink and white for a little while. I'm just picking up a little bit more white right now. Get it just a touch more lighter. And then the next color combination I'm gonna go into is white, and I'm gonna pick up just a touch of my blue. And again, I'm still going in this arcing kind of motion, 
and I, every time I go to a new color, I back it up into the previous color a little bit, and that's how it's gonna um, really blend nicely. And I'm still just using blue and white as I come down towards the bottom of the canvas, and I'm gonna use blue and white for the rest of the, um, to the bottom of the canvas. And I guess if you wanted to go just left to right, you could certainly do that, um, but I like doing this curved um, line. It almost is like the sun is just kind of, its rays are just kind of, you know, illuminating the sky and it's giving it this really interesting, um, nice look to it. And then I'm just going all the way down to the bottom, making sure I color my whole canvas all the way down to the bottom. And then we are going to switch brushes to your medium brush. So once you get this sky all nice and colored, you'll put this large brush away in your water cup and you're gonna take out your medium brush, maybe have a bite of your branch cookie and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting our branches. We're gonna use our number 12 round brush and the colors that I'm using are black and rust for the most part, and then I'll use a little bit of white at the end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with black and rust, and I'm gonna have two main branches. I'm gonna have one coming from the bottom and coming up, this will be where my birds are gonna sit, and then I'm gonna have one coming up from the side. So the trick to making a nice branch is you want it to be thick um, at the base of the branch and then go pretty skinny at the ends of the branches. And don't worry if you don't get your, the ends of your branches really tiny skinny because you're gonna be putting blossoming flowers on them later. So don't worry if they don't come out perfect. So I'm gonna start my big one down in this bottom right hand corner and I'm gonna push my brush kind of hard when I start that branch. And then I know that I want a main branch kind of coming over here where my, um, where my birds are gonna sit. So I'm gonna kind of do something like that. You can see that I kind of wiggle my brush as, as I go. Um, what ha the reason why I do that is so it looks nice and natural and it looks like, you know, it has some movement to it as opposed to a really straight line. And then when I go to do the ends of my branches, I don't push hard. I'm just using kind of the tip of my brush. And every time I go to reload my brush, I'm going to use a different, con you know, I pick up maybe one time a little bit more black, maybe one time a little bit more of the rust color. And maybe I've got a couple of little branches coming off of here. You can have them look broken. You can have them cross over one another. You can really have fun with how they look, but you definitely want it, you know, pretty thick at the base of the branch, and then you want it a little bit skinnier as it goes to the the edges of those branches. And then I'm gonna have, you know, maybe I'll do one over here, and then I'm gonna have one coming up over on this side. So again, brown or the rust color and black, and this one I'm gonna have kind of coming off this edge over here, and then maybe this one goes up in front of the sun a little bit, and I'm just kind of wiggling these branches as I'm adding them on there, and that way that's gonna make them look a little bit more natural. And then when you have them really kind of all placed where you want them to be placed, you can, without washing your brush, you can just add a touch of white to that color combination, and this is gonna add like these little highlights throughout your branches. And that's really gonna make it look even more natural. So you don't even have to wash your brush, you just kind of put a little bit of white on there and you can add these little peaks of bright spots throughout your, throughout your branches. And again, that just adds a little bit more of a natural element to it. Um, you can put a little bit down in your in this main branch down here. And again, don't worry about it being perfect because this is what's gonna make it look more natural when you, when you have imperfect little marks and stuff all over it. And then that is all I'm gonna do for this particular step. Um, the next step, I will be using um, this same brush. So once you get this done, you can wash and dry the medium brush and get ready. I'm grabbing my cookie here. Get ready for the next step. 
All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step, we are using our medium round brush. We're gonna do the base coat for our birds and we're gonna use black paint only. So on every bird, the, um, they have two basic shapes to them. They have an egg for a body and a circle for the head. And then they all have different kinds of beaks or different kinds of tails. And sometimes the head is really far away from the body like a swan or a flamingo. Their head will be really far away from the body. Um, but I'm just gonna draw a very generic kind of chickadee type bird and it's gonna look like the silhouette from behind. So I'm gonna do a couple of different um, sizes for it. So the first one I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do right here, it's gonna be a little bit bigger. So this is gonna be kind of like an egg. So you want the top part to be a little bit wider and the bottom part to be pointy. So the part of the egg, the pointy part of the egg is where the tail comes out. So this is gonna be my base for my body. That's gonna be my egg. And then I'm gonna do a circle for the head. So I'm gonna just kind of somewhere right above here, just kind of do a circle. And then if you want to not have such a indented neck, all you need to do is just kind of close off that little gap there and this little gap here and then I'm gonna put a tail on it. So I want my tail on this side of the um, branch. So I'm just gonna have my tail kind of going something like this. So that's gonna be that one. If you wanted this to be like a cardinal, maybe you could put a little crown at the top of the bird or it, maybe you want it to be like a toucan in the wow. tropical forest and it's got a big huge beak coming off the side but I'll let you decide. I'm just going to kind of do these cute little chickadees. Um, this one's going to be the second one. It's, I'm going to make this one a little bit smaller. So again I'm doing the shape of an egg for the body and then I'm going to do a little head for the head, <laughs> a little circle I should say. So my circle is going to be somewhere maybe about here. And I think that neck works on that one. And then I'm going to do a little tail coming out here. You could even do, instead of the bird sitting straight up like this, I think I'm going to do another one um, maybe up over here of a little bird sitting, like maybe laying down in the tree. So same thought process with those egg for the body. So I can have um, an egg for the body. My tail part is gonna be over here. So that's gonna be the pointy part of my egg. Then I can have a little circle on the, up for the head. And then I can put a little tail coming out here and maybe a little tiny beak or something if you wanted to go to the side. So you can use that concept with the egg and the circle and put as many little birds around here as you want. Um, and we are gonna use this medium brush for the next step, but you're gonna wanna wash it and dry it. So once you get your silhouette or the first layer of your birds on here, you can wash and dry that medium brush, take a bite of your yummy cookie and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're adding little bright green leaves on our tree because this is gonna, these are spring blossoming branches so they have these bright yellow green leaves. So the colors I'm using are white, yellow, and green. I'm using my medium brush and I'm gonna at all times have all three of these colors on my brush at the same time. Um, so that way, when I go to do these leaves, they all come out different, a different shade of yellow or a different shade of green. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, you can put them anywhere you want. I'm gonna um, just make a couple in through here so you can kind of see. I'm really gonna take my brush and just kind of flick it. So I'm taking the end of my brush, maybe one time I have a little bit more green on it, maybe one time I have a little bit more yellow, but I know that later I'm going to have a whole bunch of bright blossoming flowers. So I don't need to overload my tree with a million 
um, leaves. This is just going to be the accent around um, my blossoming flowers later. So as you're doing this, the messier you can be and the more inconsistent um, you make it, that will make it look even more natural. So you can have these little clusters here and there, but you can see some are really bright yellow, some are really bright green. I'm gonna do a little bit, you know, wherever you want to. Um, again, these are just uh, adding some more information to the tree so it doesn't just end up looking like, you know, sticks. This is gonna make it look more like a beautiful blossoming tree that's got the the start of the full leaves that are going to come after those um, flower blossoms go away in the summertime um, and again I'm just kind of picking a few spots I'm flicking my brush here and there um, I know that I'm going to have again those blossoming flowers right on top and you know you can imagine looking out you know through your window on a on a bright spring day and you'll be able to see a lot of the trees outside have these very vibrant little tiny leaves throughout them. And the next step after this, we're going to, let's see, what are we going to do for the next step? We will use our small brush. So when you get done putting these leaves on the tree, you can put your medium brush away in your water cup and take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next part is we're finishing our birds by putting feathers on them. I'm gonna use, or highlights, I'm gonna use my number zero brush. Um, the reason why, I mean, I want these to look like silhouettes, but I don't necessarily want them to look like black stickers on my canvas. Um, I, so I wanna give them a little bit of dimension, and I don't need to do much in order to do that. So the colors that I'm gonna be using are Primarily just the rust color, but I will use a little bit of white and if I need to I'll also use a little bit of black So I'm going to start with just a little bit of rust on my brush and I want um, The top or the part closest to the Sun to be the lightest or the brightest So I'm going to I'll do this one first I'm going to put some on the top of the head and then on the top of what I'm going to call the back and then I'm just going to kind of bring it down in like these little stripes. So this way it almost looks like it's being highlighted by that sun. And if you want, you can go a little bit past the edge of your black. And then once you've got a little bit on there, you can add a touch of white. Don't You don't need a lot. And that's going to help you um, make it a little bit brighter. I'm going to go down in that tail for a minute, put a couple of stripes in the tail. And by doing it in this almost striping kind of fashion, that will give the illusion of little feathers. And if you, you know, you could certainly bring a little bit over on this right side if you wanted to, but I'm going to concentrate my, my highlight over on that left side a little bit and then if you went too bright you could add back a little bit of black I'm going to go to the next bird now with again I'm starting with that rusty color that burnt sienna I'm going to put a little bit on the top of the head a little bit on the top of the back maybe a little bit down in that tail and then I'm just going to with my brush I'm just going to kind of pull it down into the back and down into the head and then I'm going to add just a tiny, tiny bit of white onto my brush. Add a touch at the top, at the top of the head. Teeny tiny bit, little tiny bit there. And then I'm just going to kind of pull it. And just, the, the less paint you use, the more control you're going to have. Um, and that's why I'm using a, just a little brush. So that way I can kind of control how this is going. Um, I just add a little bit more rust onto my brush, get this a little bit brighter into, into there, and I feel it's a touch too bright, so I just added a touch of black onto my brush, and that helps to just kind of blend it in a little bit. 
And then I'm going to go up top and do a little bit of a highlight on my tiny bird that I put up on top of the tree, inside the tree. So I put back rust on my brush. And again, the sun is over here, so that's where I'm going to put my, my highlight. So I'm putting a little bit of that rust on top of the head, maybe a little bit in the front of the chest here. And then I'm going to pull it into the bird just a little bit. Maybe put a touch on, on the tail feathers over here. Then I'm going to touch my brush just a teeny tiny bit in that white. Maybe a little more. Tiny, tiny bit. Oh, maybe a little highlight on the nose or the beak. And again, you can have fun with this. You could, you could put purple feathers on your, on your bird or pink feathers or yellow feathers, whatever color bird you want to have, that's totally up to you. If you want it to be, again, like a cardinal or a blue jay, you could put different colors. You could have a blue bird up here. So whatever colors you want to incorporate into your birds, feel free to do so. Um, I'm just making mine a little bit on the more subtle side so they look like they're kind of those silhouettes that I was talking about. But if you want yours to be really bright, have fun, do it. This is your painting. You wanna, you know, make it as vibrant or as subtle as is visually appealing to you. And that's all I'm gonna do on that step. The next step, we're gonna use our medium brush. So you can put your small brush away in your water cup, take another bite of your delicious cookie and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for this step is we are making the flowers on our blossoming tree. I'm gonna use my medium brush and the colors that I'm gonna be using are blue, pink, yellow, and white. And I'm gonna quickly show you how you can make different colors too. So if you wanna have purple flowers, you could take a little bit of your pink, a little bit of your blue, and a touch of your white and mix it together. And now you have a beautiful purple color. If you wanted to have like a peach color, you could take a little bit of your pink, a little bit of your yellow, and a little bit of your white, and mix it together. And now you have this super cool peach color. So you really can have whatever color blossoms you want. Um, you can have light blue or blue. Um, so what I do is I'm gonna go with a couple of dark colors because I like to I like these flowers to be nice and vibrant. Um, I really dig this purple color, so I think I'm going to make a little bit more of that. Um, and I, with my medium brush, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dot a whole bunch of these petals on the flowers. Um, and then what I'm going to do. I'm just mixing a whole bunch of my purple right now. Mixing, mixing, mixing. It's like a nice lavender color. So I'm gonna take my, my lavender color that I just made and I'm gonna dot in like these clusters. And I'm really not um, making them systematic. You can do, you know, two dots, you can do 16 dots, however many dots that you want. You definitely want to have some in the middle of the tree. Um, you want them at the ends of your branches. You can put them between your, your leaves. You want to make sure that you still have some of your branch part showing. Um, you're going to want to put some on every tree. Um, and once you get the dark color that you've chosen, so your color might be peach, your color might be pink, your color might be, you know, yellow, whatever color you've chosen as that dark color, that's going to be the base color for the flowers. And then, oh, I think I just have a little bit more blue on my brush on that one. I think I'm going to pick up some of that peach too. So now I've got multiple colored flowers. So I'm just kind of showing you how you can incorporate different colors on here. But once you've got enough of those blossoms or the, the dark part of the flower, the next step is going to be to put the light part of it on. And I don't wash my brush. I'm just picking up white paint. And then I'm going to dot some white within the dark part. 
So I don't dot it a lot, just a little bit, and this is going to add the little highlight into the flowers. And I've got some pink and white on my brush, so this is adding some extra little color to it. And again, you can have as, as many colors on there as you want to. It's really up to you. You can have, you know, a billion flowers if you want to, or you can just have six. However many you want is fine by me. Um, I just added a little bit of yellow and white to my brush to um, add another little color in here. So your highlight color could be just white or it could be yellow and white. Whatever you want it to be is perfectly fine. It's all going to look like a nice, a nice springtime tree that's just looking to blossom and be alive for the summertime. Um, and then if you wanted to, you could certainly also put little dots in the middle, like a dark dot in the middle of some of your flowers. That will make it look like um, it almost has that little center to it. Uh, but that's, that's just a visual preference. If you want to do that, you can. Um, or you can just kind of hang tight with, with um, this design. You could, um, again, you could incorporate whatever other colors you wanted to. You could have, you know, I don't know, the, you could have uh, green flowers, I guess, if you wanted to, or orange flowers, or, you know, whatever color is, you, is your favorite, that's what color you want to make these. Um, so again, I'm just kind of finishing up these, adding a little bit more highlight to them, just more white on my, on my blossoms. I really like these to be full and alive. And the, um, the trick for me is I like them to be different sizes too. So I like to have big full ones and then maybe little baby ones. Um, but you could have them all systematic and really kind of looking like they're the same size. Um, but for me, I really like to have the variety in them, which is why I, I'm kind of going back and forth here and, and making sure I've got different sizes and, you know, I like the white a lot. That tells me that it's really, you know, alive and, and bright and it's got some lots of sunshine on it. Um, but again, this is, this is your beautiful spring tree. You can make it as bright or as colorful as you want it to be. And you can see some of these blossoms I'm kind of putting over the branch. Um, so just know that you can do that too. You can have these little baby blossoms all over the place and that could be just little tiny white dots here and there. Um, any, any variation in size is going to make this a little bit more natural looking. So you can see I'm just kind of fiddling right now and having fun and making sure that I have as many little blossoms as I want on my tree. And then when you feel like you have enough, we have uh, one little tiny step left to do and it's gonna be with your small brush. So once you are able to stop painting, as I am not, because <laughs> I really like these, these flowers. Um, once you feel like you've got enough on here, you can put this medium brush away in your water cup and you can take out your small brush and get ready for the final step. All right, so we are on to the final step. Um, and the final step in most paintings that you do is going to be to sign it. So I'm going to use my small brush, my small number zero brush. Um, I'm going to actually use rust and black so it looks like a little bit of maybe a branch down here in the bottom corner. I'm going to do mine in the bottom left. Uh, I sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with, you know, your first name, the date, whatever you want to. This is your painting and your identifying mark, so you can certainly do it however you want to. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you love your painting as much as I do. Mine is just reminding me of a, a bright spring morning when the whole mother nature is coming to life. Maybe yours looks like, 
you know, maybe yours looks like it's sunset and these birds are just ready to go none nights for the evening. But whatever you interpret your painting and, and, and you know, find it pleasing to your eye is however you want it to be. And I hope during this process you enjoyed your delicious cookies and I look forward to painting and eating some cookies with you again sometime.